very, very proud of him. I'm actually even starstruck because he's a fan. I watch his work. And let me give you guys some of the work that he's done. If you're a South African, you can relate with some of the work that this man has been putting on. The estate, Savage Beauty, The Brave Ones, The Queen, Hush Money, Season 1, he did Rhythm City, Scandal, he did The Throne, Ring of Lies, Season 1 and 2, Zbondi Iwe, Shreds and Dreams, he did Saints and Sinners, Soul Parties, remember Soul Parties? And that's when, that's when I got introduced to him, like many years ago, just after the um, 2010 World Cup. The Bay of Plenty did Zero Tolerance, Justice for All. He's also done film, not only TV, Miss Education, Ngoma Film, Collision, Utando Neti Ski, Kibona Spoko, Umlaleli, Yo, All the Jakes Are Missing, Kandakulu, Wini. He's a softer award winning actor, um, AMVCAs. He is here, and I'm quite proud and I'm humble. To have him on the Hustlers Corner. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good, my love. Yeah, boy, I'm Mr. Mposa. Boy, my love. Yes, Mr. Mposa, si ben kimal for the, for anybody that doesn't know you. Um, <laughs> I always say if anyone asks me that question, I'm kim. Kim, I'm for but um, short, just a storyteller, a healer, um, a, a traveler, and someone who's trying to find his way back home. Yeah, yeah. You hold a BA in politics and philosophy from vets. Yeah. Most most parents are like, go this route to Wanag. Yeah. Tell me about your experience. Like, did you know that you'll get into the arts one time yeah. at some point? Or some people actually go even get the degrees for their parents mm -hmm. and then they pursue their dreams. What was it in your case? It was a bit of both. Um, I mean, I started acting when I was uh, 10, 11, 12. Um, and I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, and then when I was in high school, there was an open day with Avda. Avda was the only school that I had applied at. Um, so, I mean, I got good grades and then I got a bursary. So because I got a, a good bursary, they had said that I can't go to a public institution. I mean, a private institution it used to be public. So because I had only applied at Avda, because I knew that I wanted to study directing and producing, um, parents were like, yo, there's a degree. So there's no way we're gonna pay for fees when the degree is right there go and study. So only in, in January did I go and apply at WITS and I couldn't do drama there, couldn't do law. And the next best fit was doing a BA a degree. And that's how I actually ended up at WITS. And, and, and let's talk about the acting, the acting part, taking it further. Cause yeah. as much as you had started earlier, you could have easily decided now I've got a degree, I've got this acting yeah. thing, let me go and yeah. work elsewhere. Uh, for me, acting helped me uh, better express myself and better tell people's stories. Because I felt like a lot of our people were either silenced or the certain things that they want to bring out of, uh, bring out there and they didn't necessarily have the platform. Acting gave me that platform. And with certain things, it would heal me and I would see how other people would get healed by not just my work, but by the work that you know actors do or drama does um, inadvertently. So I decided a long time ago from high school that this is the route that I wanted to do. I wanted to do film. I wanted to touch people. I wanted to speak to people. I wanted to heal people. It's not easy to be a independent contractor or an artist in this country and do so much work yeah. between 2011 and now. Did you have an agency? Do you go out looking for your own work? Do you create your own work? Because I can see since 2011, pretty much you've been working every year till today. It's definitely, it's definitely been God. God, and yes, I do have a good agency, but it's also just working on craft. Um, when you maximize craft, because one can have talent, right? And one can have skill, but if you working on that scale maximizes your talent. So I worked on my craft during the years and that maximized my talent. And that, that's how I was able to continue, you know, getting work really. I get you. Yeah. And your relationship with um, production companies, I've never read anything about you writing bad about any production company out there. I mean, no, I deal, I deal with, with, with whoever I need to deal with, you know, face to face. And that's, that's that on that. I, I don't believe in using social media for cancel culture. I believe that everything can be solved with a conversation. Mm. Yeah. The, the state of acting or filmmaking in South Africa in 2024. I'll say 2024 since we are getting into that year. Yeah. How is it? Is, is it better off than it was back then? Or are we um, still in the state where a lot of our actors uh, who were complaining about the issues then, it's still the same issues now, even bigger? So the issues uh, that people had back then are still trickling in, right? But, you know, with um, 
actors and agencies such as SAG AFRA, uh, we're trying to change that, or they're trying to change that at the very least, you know, having a guild um, that, is, that has put forward a bill, you know, for change so that at the very least actors can have royalties. But beyond that, there's also a lot more platforms than there were before. Back then, it was just a national broadcaster. Right now, there's, there's Amazon, there's Netflix, and there's others that are still bubbling under your EVODs. So that really does help the industry because it creates, the, it creates a bigger pie for everyone to eat. So I think people are a lot more comfortable, although there are certain issues that we're still fighting. Mm. Yeah. And let's talk about you being a healer. Mm -hmm. how, does that, um, how do you incorporate that in, in, in your storytelling? The first thing, right, is to tell the truth in, in whatever character that I'm given, you know and not to act it out, but to, to actually be that person and go through that person's journey and to tell it with grace and to immerse myself in character. Now, once I immerse myself in a particular character and you can recognize yourself in that character, depending on what the trajectory of that character is, it'll help you heal because you can, you see yourself seen. I think the biggest thing that people want is just to be seen. So if I can recognize myself in that character and then the life story that you tell, you know, maybe at least gives me encouragement as to how I should go about my life, that works. And your uh, upbringing, Uh I was born in Kozola, Soweto, uh, and then we had to leave because um, there was a tragedy that happened in the family. My, my uncle was gunned down. Oh, I'm and, sorry, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. My grandmother just wanted all of us to just move. So, so from parents, Zola, Zola, Zola. Yeah, from Zola. Yo, Zola, 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 they're not even one off. I think it's still regarded as the most... Um, I don't want to say dangerous guys mm. in Soviet, but I mean, some of you guys are from Joe, but no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's, I think it's a lot better now. I think it's a lot better now um, than it was before. But yeah, my, 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 my uncle was also involved with just the wrong crowd. Uh, and my mom just, my grandmother just wanted us all to move because she didn't want my, my, my father also falling into the same pit. Uh, and then from there, we went to the West Rand, Holy Bot. And I, my other grandmother was still in Soweto, so I would live between Soweto and Holy Bot. Mm. Yeah. Big family? Very small family, actually. Very small family uh, and very close knit, also. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of our skills that we, some of the things we do now, were you yeah. one of those guys who used to do um, this sketch? Gila, definitely. So, first, I was just So, I would just mimic whoever I liked at the time. Um, and I just get up there. And then they would let me do my thing, you know. Um, my mom believed in self expression. Although next time I'd get down there, but to a certain degree express yourself. So even when I got to, to primary school, she would encourage me to do uh, public speaking, to try public speaking. Whether I'm good at it or not, it's more about just having or oh, I finding the, the art in self-expression and just being able to put your point across. Um, so I'd do that, I would do choral verse, I'd do plays. And I think within that realm of doing plays and doing I'm a choral verse and um, speeches, um, that's when a friend of my mom's actually saw uh, something in me and decided that she will manage me for some time. Mm, and how did that go? I mean, it went well for some time until it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> then I stopped, stopped, and then I only picked it up again in um, in high school. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, was, what was your first gig? Was Soul Buddies your first gig? My first gig was Zero Tolerance with Usisim Shiri Mutsehwa, Tony Khoroche, Lindelani, back, back in the day. Yo, those are day. veterans. Those yeah. are professionals, like yeah. the top of the top in South African acting. Yeah. Cream of the crowd. I yeah. can imagine you learned a lot from them. I did. Although the funny thing is whenever I was on set, I just thought I was there to play. I knew I was there to work, but for me, it was, it was fun. They didn't make it seem as though, you know, I have to work 12 hours a day. I was there, did my thing and out. I was just happy to have some biscuits and play. Because <laughs> that's what, like 2010 around there? 20, uh, no, even back before, before 2010. Okay. Uh, probably 20, 2006, six, seven, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and how has it been though, just being that child that grows up on TV? Um, I've grounded myself by, by having friends. A bulk of my friends aren't necessarily part of the industry. Um, and I also lived at home for so long. And for me, how that helped me is that I stayed grounded. I, stayed, I, still, I was still the kid. I still did chores. I still helped around. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I'm grounded before I go and look for my own space and become my own human being. So yeah, that's, that, 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 that's what has helped me. You know, just staying grounded and being, having people that are outside of the industry, but you know, can also help me in whatever ways to stay grounded. Gil time I know and you know I'm, I'm scratching my head between okay where do I take my child you know yeah. are we uh, me, me, 
us as the parents intentional about this is what this child is going to become. Mm. Are we going to leave our child to become whatever she wants to become one day? She makes her own decisions. Mm. Am I going to have this child in the industry? Mm. But whether I like it or not, whether I'm there or not, you know, because I'm a popular figure in the mm. country, people mm. always associate her with me. Yeah. And I want to know from you as a child, what, what type of um, um, relationship with money did you have as far as your parents are concerned um, in, in being involved in your career, as you're saying, or your first manager was through your moms, and w were they, what, like a family member? Family there was a friend. friend. There was a, fa a family friend. Yeah, yeah. She happened to be an actor as well. Yeah. Yeah. And are you for the idea that kids should start young, make their own money, and how do you manage money in this industry? So when I was younger, I didn't know how much I was making. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't know how much oh, I was yeah. making. Parents would just make the money, put it away for my studies, uh, whatever I needed and, or whatever we needed in the house. So I really didn't know. Hence, for me, it was always about play. It's only later in my career, um, and I would say even more so in varsity, where I also started to negotiate my own contracts with my agent, where I was like, okay, um, look, we've been doing this for this long, so there is you know, some experience, and this is the show, and if we're going to be given a lead, maybe we should be playing around this, this figure over here. Um, but my parents did always teach me to save. I think that was the biggest thing, to save, but to also invest, uh, to, also, to do things that will also help you with your career. I bought my first car when I was in high school, no, no, in, 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 in um, varsity, because I needed it to go to work, you know, because I would always borrow their car or use public transport, but sometimes the times could be awkward, so I needed to get my own ride, and that's when I was, I, that's the first time I saved up for something that was big, and I was able to do myself. What would you do different now with your child if they had aspirations of getting into the industry? I, I would definitely open either a bank account for them, but make sure that the money accumulates and, and invest. I would invest them and I wouldn't touch it at all. I think sometimes our, our parents, because they're not, maybe not necessarily educated or call it just short time, I'm not So I'm going to call it, so it's a so it's a And that's cool and all, but I would want to get to a point where I almost plan their lives for them in the sense that when they get to a certain age and the money has, accum has accumulated to a certain degree and they, maybe they need a car, get the car for them. And maybe give them the facade that it's, it's, it's been me, but then give them the papers and lay it down that all of this money actually comes from you. And this is what happens when you, know, you determine and this is what happens when you put your money away. This is what happens when you're smart with your money. So I would make sure that I, whatever they need that is more so an asset. I mean, a car really is a liability, especially in, in this uh, economy that we live in right now. But things like maybe try to get them a house or whatever, that's what I would do with their money. I would mm. invest it in things that are practical for them that they would definitely uh, need and use in the future. Yo, that is so interesting to hear it from an actor's perspective, man. Has the industry changed for the better now that there's the likes of Abu Amazon, Abu Disney, Abu Netflix in them? Definitely. Uh, in the sense that they have pumped a lot, of, a lot more money into you know, the production companies. So that means then the actor doesn't get paid the bare minimum. He gets paid close to what you know, they should be getting. So in that regard, it helps you, um, you know, have some sort of nothing. We are capable to do a can for this couple of months. It's not necessarily hand to mouth, so you can also afford to put away a, a, like a big chunk of money. Mm. Whereas before, these productions will will give you a very low budget and say that that's the only budget that they have. And now it ends up working against you as an actor, especially in the long term. Mm. You know? I, I sat down with the great, um, I, iconic. Dr. John Khan, mm. once Siabulela. again, we always appreciate your time coming to, you know, small guys like us on these podcasts and, you know, discussing your, your life story. I always go back to that um, episode. Whenever you get a chance, go check out an episode of him on The Hustler's Corner. We had an interview with him. Also, go check out one he did with McG. Mm -hmm. He was also dope. He dropped, he dropped a lot of jams on yeah. the McG episode. Yeah. Watch yeah. both episodes. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're an actor, you would like to get into this industry. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that he touched on is um, the money management of artists. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you have had to do when in the absence of work for a couple of... As much as your resume says you were working, it looks like every year you were working, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there were months... Mm, where the, no. there was no work. Because sometimes, yeah. or TV, maybe over a sure, year ago. Sure, sure. You know? No, there was a good two years that I wasn't working. I think just after, during COVID, during COVID and the, the next year, something like that, that I wasn't working. What I decided to do with the money that I have are two things. Start a business, 
and secondly, maximize my craft. So I started working on myself as an actor because I believe if I'm not working in the industry, I should be working on myself mm. because the only way that I can have staying power is if I've, I've invested in myself. I can't, I can't expect a production company to invest in me whereas I don't invest in myself. And by what that looks like is staying healthy, eating healthy, going for workshops, finding an acting mentor, finding an acting coach, learning new monologues, finding new ways of telling the truth, finding new ways of you know, getting into character, finding new ways of portraying a character that people can relate to. So I definitely work on my craft. The second thing I did, I just started a business because I could see with Lana, if we, I'm, I'm not trying to hustle or find a way to, to make money, it was also that one. So I kept myself busy. I, I, I tried, I think in the Bell Party, an, 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 an idle mind is a very dangerous place to be in. So I tried not to be idle. So I would read. That's, that's also another thing, another form of investment. Read, do research, uh, listen to podcasts that, that give you gems, you know. Um, actively go seek that which you're lacking. In the early days when um, Tusom, very proud of you, by the way, my sister, Tusom Betu had arrived in L.A., uh, and, and a lot of the times that we'd bump into each other and, 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 and hang out, I found out that she wasn't actually there for acting in the beginning. She mm. was attending acting classes. Mm. Mm. I think she was there for a year, if not longer, yeah. just attending acting classes. Yeah. They train you even on the accent. Yeah. They train you even, yeah. you know, as opposed to just thinking, I'm this big time actor or yeah. actress where I come from. Yeah. I'm here to kill it in yeah. this um, foreign country. So I like what you're saying, mm. talking about personal development. Because yeah. it's very easy for us human beings to be in that comfort zone and think, Absolutely. I've got it all together. Absolutely. Sharpen that skill you consistently, right? You have to. Because, I mean, you're a young actor, you get into the industry, and maybe you're popping, and you may be popping for a year, maybe two, maybe three. But if you haven't worked on your craft, you understand that you're still serving us the same bread that you did three years ago. There's nothing fresh about you. There's nothing interesting about you. You have now, because of all you've, all, you've been working for that long and not working on your craft, you, be, you end up becoming stale. And that's when they, they get either new blood or someone else for a role that you could have easily handled. It's very important to go out there, do your voice work, work on your body, work on your mind, um, go and look at people, research people, um, learn about the psychology of people, learn about um, characteristics, learn about um, psychology of people, you know, like the different types of personality disorders, because you might need to play a character. And if you don't understand that this, pe this person, he's, he's layers or what, what his actual problem is, then you're gonna play him flat. But if you can understand, oh, this person is type A personality disorder. So let me lay it here and here and here. And this is his need to speak. By the time I get on set, you know, I'm giving you something interesting to, to watch. It's not just what I'm saying, but it's, it's how I'm saying it. It's the movement, it's the nuance. And all of that comes from prepping way before you get the character. And what are some of your most favorite, char favorite characters that you've had to play? Uh, Caesar on Miseducation challenged me. Um, and for those who don't know Caesar, what type of a character? So, so, so Caesar, <laughs> so Miss Education is a, is a coming of age drama, a young adult drama uh, on Netflix. It's about this girl, Umbali, who, who's, who's, whose parents or whose mother is an MP, but she is, she, 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 that, there's a scandal that happens and now they have to leave Joburg and relocate also because they're being um, uh, hunted by the Hawks. So she ends up coming to Makanda University which is where we find Caesar and Sibu. So Caesar is a SRC president who is running for his second term at the school. So when this character comes in, Rambali, she wants to then help the opposing side because it's someone that is her love interest. She wants to help the opposing side win so that she can become popular again. So I just don't want that. I actually want to work with her mother. So Caesar is a, a budding politician who is old and he he's really enjoying the resources that come with being SRC in university. So he's a, he's a little bit twisted and you know, there's things about his sexuality that are highly questionable. Uh, and this is something that he wants to guard with everything in him. So that's the type of character he is. He's very layered. Um, he comes across as very charismatic, but he's also silently ruthless. Yeah. Why is that one of your favorite characters that you've ever played? Because I, 
I know a Caesar. When I was in in in, in at, at Vits, one, one of my exactly. So when you to in my I'm like, okay, that's this one is interesting. Well, and Lim Kitama would come for maybe uh, a lecture. I'm a fan of Baba I'm like, damn. But when I when I look at it, so I started studying him, and I could see. When when I was given the story of Caesar, I knew exactly who that was because I was I was with a Caesar in my varsity, and it's also around the time when the movement, the red the red the red movement, or it, let me rather say the EFF, yeah, right? yeah yeah okay fine. Let's Were you there during the fees must fall? Correct. Um, okay. Yeah, fees EFF started while I was in varsity, and it started just as a movement before it became a political party. I think it became it became a political party maybe two years after. Um, the movement had started, and that's before uh, the People's Bay like moved over from 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 the ANC fleet to uh, EFF. Yeah, and and then and then another character apart from Caesar. Another character. Oh, uh, the character I played on Savage Beauty, Bonga. 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 Now the story with with Bonga and his sister, uh, who's played by Rosemary Zimmer, who's amazing, nominated for SAFTA as well. Mantat was on the show. She won the SAFTA. Was really lovely. Now the story about these two is that. When they grew up, they were abducted because they were living on the streets. They like the whole family passed away. So there were kids that were just living on the streets. And then comes this rich family that comes and takes them into custody or takes them under their wing. And then they start testing these beauty products on, on, on these kids. So they use their skin mm. and use bleaching products. And these are very harmful. Mm -hmm. So what ends up happening is that, you know, it, they end up, you know, getting infections and like skin sabon asacha because of the product. Mm. So when the warehouse burns down, because there were other kids that they were using to test these products, when the warehouse burned down, these two were able to um, escape. And they've always had this idea that they're going to go and you know formulate a, a strategy to, to avenge what happened to them because they ended up losing their sister who died of cancer because of what was happening there. Now, the reason why this particular character for me st stood out is because Again, for me, he was led, you know. I feel like his childhood was taken away from him and he didn't have a father, he didn't have a mother at the time, he only had his sister. And all his life, and all, all he wanted to do was just make sure that his sister was okay, protect his sister, because he couldn't protect their oldest sister before, you know, from getting hurt and from dying from cancer. So his entire life was more so based on making sure that his sister is safe. So I felt like there were so many layers to him and so many mental issues that he had to deal with you know ptsd you know and i also didn't feel like he, he got a chance to become a kid and to actually grow into adulthood i felt like he was the same person when he was a kid that that, that he ended up being in his adult in, in his adult life so because there were so many layers and because like there's mental health issues that were there that we needed to play with although very subtly without it being too much on the nose that for me was a very lovely character to play I had Brajeri at the Softer's speech, incredible speech, by the way, that he gave. He also touched on producers, directors, or casting agencies going for numbers as opposed to talent. Yeah. Your take? I agree with him fully. Employ actors. Employ actors because these are people that have worked on their craft. There are other people that have gotten jobs, you know, off the merit that they look good or they have numbers, but the audience is not stupid. You know, the audience can tell if this person really doesn't know what they're doing and, you know, it ends up being very disrespectful to our audience. So let's respect our audience and, you know, employ actors. Look, every now and then there is that one kid who is maybe on TikTok and who's very talented or has the potential of being an actor. If you're going to give that person a role, give them the support as well. Because they, they, they throw people in deep ends, these, some of these production companies, and then these people don't have support, and then they don't end up knowing how to navigate not just the industry, but the character as well. So I think if you're gonna, if you're gonna find you know, uh, talent from outside, just give them the support they need. And by the support, something as simple as an acting coach. You know? Just that, at the very least, let's start with an acting coach so that you know, they can also flourish instead of, you know, maybe they had the dream to become an actor but didn't have the resources. You've given, you've given them the opportunity. Let's just give them, you know, a safety landing by giving them, at, at the very least, the support of a, a, a mentor. Growth. Yeah. Would you like to get into directing at some point? Have you started? Mm -hmm. There's some maybe side work that you're doing quietly yeah. in filmmaking. I would absolutely like to get into directing. I've been doing my own research on the type of director that I want to be and the type of shows that I want to play or rather direct. 
And, you know, I think I want to get into it probably by the end of this year. You know, okay. I, I almost said when I'm ready, but, you know, there's no time like now. I like ever. that. I like there's that. no time yeah. like there's now. There's no time like now. Yeah, so I'm ready to take on directing jobs. It's something that I've been working on. This in the same manner that I'm saying that if you want to be an actor, work on your craft. I'm also working on the craft. So mm. I just don't get the job off merit, you know. I want to get the job because I'm good at it, you know. So that's definitely something I'm working on. And that's definitely something that I'll, I'll start doing from this year. What, do you, what advice do you give to other younger actors who see a production as play play like you did? Although Anna obviously will forgive you because you were young. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The older people who actually forget to go to... This is actually real work. Mm. Or, or even some of them who get taken over by this fame thing. Mm. Because Lamalaita like Chosa no goes plus, or Lamalaita like TV. Mm. Sometimes also so ponanga or stanya, and sometimes, you know, the behavior changes. Yeah. What advice do you give to those young actors? Ground yourself, man. Um, what is your why? And if you don't understand your why, or if your why is fame, you must understand that fame uh, is very fickle. Um, time is fleeting. So, <laughs> understand what your why is when you enter into any space. If you enter into a space not knowing why you're there, then you'll always be overshadowed or you'll just be blinded by the light. But if you go into a space knowing or feeling like God has sent you there, there's a different way that you move. If you go into a space knowing that your ancestors are with you, there's a different way that you move because you know you're here for a purpose. So if you're not doing it for a purpose, then it's just going to fizzle out. Um, so I tell these actors to also please just go and study, understand what you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing because we're telling stories of real people. They may be fiction on story or, or rather on paper, but these are real people with real lives. And when they look at you, they're looking at you hoping that you can give what their thoughts are a voice. So understand that this thing is bigger than you. The fame will come in and it'll go. And I mean, people have been popular in high school and not all of them amounted to anything because they believed in the hype. Don't believe in your own hype. Don't believe in your own hype because that fizzles out. And let's talk about your spiritual connection as well and how, how you've been able to ground yourself to not be, to not be vacuumed or taken over by this fame drug. Mm. Because it can take you to some dark places, man. It definitely can take you to some dark places. And the thing is, if you're not conscious of it, you can't illuminate yourself out of those dark places. Um, when I was a lot younger, first and foremost, I'll give you like, you know, uh, how my spiritual my spiritual journey when I was a lot younger my grandmother because I used to live with my grandmother a lot she would make sure every Sunday oh who is thinking of my Grisa yeah ah that's nice, that's <laughs> no, nice she would, she would. is she still alive no she's not she passed away oh man may her soul rest in yeah, peace I'm sure you miss her Ha'ol. 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 Um, I believe she's definitely my biggest you know guardian angel um, when I was younger she would definitely she would take me to church right she would take me to church each and every day or each and every Sunday rather and at first I didn't understand why I had to go to church. At some point, I just got bored of it. But the older I got, um, even that idea of going to church started being distorted because I started learning philosophy. And I started learning that, oh, I've got other options than just to be Christian or just to believe in you know, uh, this particular religion. So I shied away from it for, for a while. This is in varsity. And this was important because at some point, you need something that you need to fall back on, something that is bigger than you. Because I believe that we are not of the flesh. I believe that we're not men of men. We're men of God, but we are also spiritual beings first before we, before we, we, we take over this host that is our body. We are spiritual beings first. And a lot of our physical manifestations first begin as spiritual manifestations. So if there's inner turmoil that you're not working on, it'll manifest physically. And that's what happened. And that happens when you are not, when your cup is not full, full rather. So I needed to fill my cup with the Holy Spirit. I needed to fill my cup with the understanding of my ancestors and where I come from. I needed to fill my cup with who and what my spirit needed me to do in order for me to, to again, you know, physically get back to myself and really walk myself home and come back home to myself. So I, 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 I was on that path and I thought I was on the right path, but at some point, uh, I just felt like my world was just falling apart. And when my world started falling apart, for some odd reason, that drew me closer to God. So one day I was out with my friends and a lady that knew nothing of us came to whisper in my ear and said, God still loves you. Try praying today. 
whatever it is that you're worrying about, it will come to pass. That rang into, in my head for like a good week. I went back and I told my mom. And my mom just said, mm, I know. My mom took me to Zion. So it was two different churches, right? So to be pulled by my mom and says, nah, nah, I say so I'm doing. And this is the reason why I say so I'm doing. And I, it, it's funny because I could see philosophy unravel in a different kind of way. Because philosophy at the end of the day is just a, a way of life, right? And you learn critical uh, uh, thinking patterns. But anyway, going to Zion and having a different kind of approach to church brought me back to church, but also brought me closer to Amadou's work. Because I understand that these two could literally live together. You know what I mean? Um, so I, be, I started becoming grounded and I started becoming closer to my mom and I started becoming closer to God. Whenever I went to do something, it brought me closer, cr uh, closer to God. And that made me realize that whether I'm at the peak or at the valley of my mountain or my journey, I need God and I need my ancestors. These are the only people that will always have my back. These are the only people that will whisper me whatever route I need to take whenever I am lost, because you will get lost, you know. And sometimes you get lost because you're not conscious of where you're going. Sometimes you get lost because your conscious, is, your conscious can also be misleading. So you need them to stay at your, at your subconscious and you need them to almost be your, 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 your safe haven and your, your, your safety net whenever it is that you're led astray because you get into these particular realms where it just becomes super dangerous. And if our tandas or our path or our kulum nabagin, that's when you know, you'll be consumed. And once you're consumed in the spiritual realm, it's very hard to get back physically. Public judgment as a public figure, going through what you've had to go through, that spiritual journey, been going through mine for a couple of years, I know it's not easy. Mm. How have you had to handle that? Firstly, I don't seek validation from anyone. I used to when I was younger. The older I got, I understood how living a life, uh, either to please people or seeking validation, it, it hurt my art. And I believe that the quality of your life informs the quality of your art. So in order for me to play any role at the highest level that I, I possibly could, I can't be, um, I, I, I can't have the view that I need someone's opinion to, to let me know if I'm doing good or not. So I let go of that completely. I do what I do because it's bigger than me. It's bigger than where I am right now. And I know it's, it's, I'm not just doing it for myself. There are other people that either came before me, there are people that are gonna come before me, but there are also people that I'm around right now that need the truth and that's it. So I'm not, I, I don't live for anyone's uh, validation. And that's what has helped me navigate. We've become good at handling that now that we're older mm. in, in this, uh, you know, uh, fame thing, for lack of a better word. How did, you, how did it affect you when you were younger, when you didn't know what you know now? I was insecure. At times when you become insecure, because you feel like you're not popping, you feel like you're not driving the car, that you, you feel like you're not where you need to be. But the reality is you're always where you need to be in your life. Everything that you go through is preparing you for exactly what you asked for. And in certain moments, you don't see that right now. You only see it a lot later. But you need to be conscious of what it is that you went through and be grateful for the lessons that you learned. Because all of that informed the human that you end up being. And how were you able to pursue your studies and even acquire your um, educational qualifications while you were still an artist? How were you able to manage the two, because sometimes it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, so yeah, I was at Vets and I did my BA, and I think I was in my second year. So my first year, oh, second year, I landed uh, Shiznes. So I started- uh, I remember Shiznes, yeah. yeah. So I started presenting on Shiznes and crazy. Um, Nabo, Yeah, Nabo, yeah, yeah. Love those guys, we yeah. haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. No, wow, no, they're, they're, some, they're still good, they're still good. So I started, um, and that's when I was able to actually buy my first car in varsity second year. Um, so it was that, so it was still easy because it was just presenting once a week, once a week. Then I landed Zbondi, uh, that was also easy because I shot most of it within my hiatus. Third year comes through, now Ring of Lies comes season one and they give me the lead. The first few months I'm holding my own. After that, I couldn't because I was literally working every single day. Mm. And as a lead, you have more uh, scenes than anyone does. So that started like chowing at me. So I decided to take a pause for a while from school. I couldn't do it. I think 
within yeah, the, the sixth month of the year, I decided, let me take a break, I'll come back. Because it just started becoming even more and more demanding, you know. We would shoot at different locations and it was coming a lot further, you know, from where school was. And I had to like find a way to like, travel myself and it was just it was just too much. So I had to take a break. Um, and then I came back and this is when it was literally the worst time for me because when I was doing Ring of Life season one, I felt like the people that knew me didn't make a big deal of it in varsity. But now when I come come back, I'm, I'm feeling the eyes. I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah, I'm like, snap. <laughs> this is not what I want for my life. So I found a way to, and I think it was, it was also because of me. I, one of the, 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 the electives that I took when I came back was a first year elective because I wanted to you know, just try something else and to also just get points so I could finish in one year. That first year elective was the worst one because now literally there were eyes all over. So I ended up dropping that elective and just focused on these two. And then I finished and I was like, I'm out. I can't go to a public institution like that because eyes personally make me feel awkward. I know we'll always get eyes, but sometimes they make me feel awkward. And I, I just want to feel like we're all here together. And like, man, just treat me normally. Because at the end of the day, I, I am normal. Maybe what I do is abnormal, but I am human first before anything. So I really value, you know, respect. And I value, when I get into my world, respect you. And I also value if you respect me back. Because I, I just feel like, like mm. yeah. And let's talk about philosophy. What has that taught you? And how have you, how have you incorporated it into your art? Uh, <clears throat> the simplest way that I can tell you what it taught me is to solve any, I can solve any situation in my mind real quick. That's the biggest thing. But also, it's also taught me that the unexamined life is a life wasted. So in as much as I can solve anything because I've got these critical thinking skills, but it's also important to examine your life, to really interrogate and to really... Um, uh, inspect how did I make people feel today? Snap. When I had this conversation, this person reacted this way. Did they react that way because of me or were they going through their own things? Um, how am I affecting and affecting a room? Am I doing it with, with love? Am I bringing positivity? Or am I just bringing more negativity? So it's important to examine your life each and every day so that you can live a high quality life and not just pass through life passively because then there's so many chances that you would have missed to either change a life, heal someone, make someone happy because all of us here are going through some things. Each and every one of us here is going through something and it makes it a lot better when as a community we hold each other's hands. Yeah. Because with what you're doing you're actually ministering. To a certain degree. To a certain degree. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's ministry. Yeah. It's ministry. I even say that to musicians. I say that to you guys, actors, mm -hmm. even us with the podcast, educational platforms, positive content. Imagine how many people you're impacting now just with this interview. Mm -hmm. That's part mm -hmm. of ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's but it's godless. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to find the soul. Yeah. So it's important for us to we must be mindful, especially with the platforms that we have. What is it that we're spewing? Because they are okay, Seb, we'll watch The Hustler's Corner. And they're thinking it's all about hustle and it's, I just want to... It's like, wait, do you understand where it comes from? The idea of this being The Hustler's Corner, who I'm chilling with and who I'm having conversations with and why we're having these conversations. Oh, snap, I could learn a thing or two. Oh, I learned this, I learned that. That was a really life-changing interview. But if I'm here just to spew negativity, then the platform that I'm using, I'm using it very wrong and I'm sending the wrong message. And then, most more, more especially, uh, who raised them? Because mm. the kids these days, they're still raised by, by the village, but this, this has become the village. Mm. This has become their mothers and fathers. Because you know? everyone is here. Everyone, everyone is, is here. here every time. So it's, it's, it's important for us to understand that, or rather to understand the responsibility that we have with these platforms that we use. With that being said, what is your life's purpose and how are you fulfilling it? Mm. It's a very, very good question. Firstly, I'll say that each and every day, I am constantly finding my purpose. It's like a system upgrade that happens each and every day. And I can only pray that all of the work that I do brings me and draws me closer and closer to that. I believe, and I think I did mention earlier, that my purpose is to heal. 
My purpose is to heal and to be a mouthpiece for the voiceless. Um, and I see this in my dreams. I see this with you know my, my, my ancestors that I, that I have conversations with that all they want me to do is, is heal and, and to almost be a vessel a vessel for God's word. I pray that in each and every room that I walk into, people see God through me. I hope that people see themselves through me. You know, I just want to be a mirror, but more so heal. I think for me, that's the most important thing. I want you to feel seen when I'm with you. I want you to feel loved. I want you to feel like you can be the best possible version of yourself because I'm holding space for you. My purpose is to hold space. A young person is watching right now from Emlaz from Kuruman, some of them are watching from Limpopo, wherever they might be from. How do I discover my purpose, Mahrugman? Mm. a purpose even. Mm. even. Mm. Mm. How you discover it, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Your purpose will always be aligned with what you can do well. Thank you. And it comes from somewhere, like, somewhere there. Somewhere there. It's, very, it's not tangible, but whatever you can do well, there's always a greater reason for you doing it. Now you must understand that in order for you to find your purpose, you need to be entrenched in something, be it spirituality or you know, your ancestors. There has to be something bigger than you that you believe in. And if you can channel yourself and listen to like the world, the, the, the air, the air communicates, trees communicate, the earth communicates, water communicates, God communicates, your own intuition uh, communicates, but you can only find your purpose if you're still. And by stillness means, you know, you can't always be out there partying because when you're out partying, your ancestors could be trying to get a message to you, but you're not sober enough to listen to it. Spend time with yourself. Really ask yourself what it is that you want to achieve in life. And th these shouldn't even be materialistic. What is it that you want to achieve that isn't materialistic? How can you change uh, someone's life? How can you make someone's life better? Your purpose will, will, will be whispered to you in the darkest of nights, but even in the brightest of days. But you have to be still. You have to be conscious. You have to be conscious of how you're affecting the world. You have to be conscious of how you're affected. There's many messages that we get, but we can't receive them if we're not conscious. I could be on the other side of the road. Eh, that's woo, that's woo. But because there's so many cars and you tuned into the noise, and maybe you also have your he headphones on, on gears, but maybe I was trying to warn you, you would go to the Ancestors work the same. Maybe we tuned into this problem that we have right now. Maybe the noise up and down could be uh, abangani, you know, and people that look like abangani. So as, as bears, or, and then we says one system code So it's important for you to take those earphones out and really be aware of your surroundings. Be aware, that, like when you drive tomorrow, or when you drive home. Do you know the route that you're going? We just know what to how you got left it. Have you counted the trees? Have you seen how you know the wind just blows through? Have you noticed that guy who's at the robot? He's not there today. Did you notice what the robot Namflange ate? it delayed. Are you conscious of your surroundings? Because when you're conscious of your surroundings and you're conscious of yourself, then you can find your purpose. So be still and live in the moment. Mm. As I always say to you guys, there is no such a thing as the future. Mm. The future is what you do now. Mm. The future is just another present moment mm. that is still yet to come. Yeah. And the past is, it was a present moment at that point. Mm. So if you don't do anything now, there shouldn't be that mindset that ends up um, getting you or, or getting you falling into that trap of procrastination, which is how most of us live our lives daily. Mm. Because of just this word being the future, the future, the future, we always think, mm -hmm. I'm still young, I'm going to mm -hmm. do it in the future, I'm going to do it on Monday, I'm going to do it in January, I'm going to mm -hmm. do it in I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what you've just said, be still, live in the moment, mm -hmm. and be present in your life. Because mm -hmm. you know, it different, right? I agree for yes. And also to also understand that all of us, if we're going to be blatantly honest, are an accumulation of every choice that we've made. Mm. I like that. Decisions, yeah. right? Daily decisions, decisions. Daily decisions. We are here where we are because of the decisions we made prior. Not all of them are good. Some of them are great. Most of them are because we're still alive. So now that the fact that we're still alive, we need to make a better decision and try to always find a way to learn. 
learn because we don't we don't have it all figured out. And I notice this: the older that we get, um, the the more I have conversations with my parents. I'm like, wow, these people have been living on the street, but they also don't have it figured out. Mm. So it's so important to also be kind, be kind, because now we end up having this ideal of entitlement. You guys brought me Lana. So why Why didn't you? My parents are figuring it out. And I must understand that in as much as I'm a gift to them, my life is a gift as well. But how am I using it? You know, uh, I think I read something this one day. It said that um, our life is a gift from God, but what we do with it is a gift back to God. Yeah. So how are we gifting him back? If we're just going to live passively, so pay up. Yeah, but I think that's something we need to understand. Which is the decisions that we make each and every day, or where we are right now, is an accumulation of all of my decisions. And I can't blame anyone else. I can't. If I messed up, sharp, go back, guys, I messed up. Let me find a way to remedy the situation. Let me start making better decisions. And it's never too late to start making better decisions. You may have messed up your entire life. Start today. Make a better decision today. And even if you have to plan your day for success, it's okay. But the first thing I'm going to start doing is by planning my day. This is what I'm going to do. 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 And maybe we are caught. So as long as you have written it down, it keeps you on track. So be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. Make the right choices. Work towards it. It doesn't mean which is a pop access, but work towards it. And don't pay more of it. Don't pay more of it because this life is long. But always strive to make the best possible decision right now. Learn, L-E-A-R-N. We call it an L or we call it a W. How do you not get these L's in Jalo? You just focus on that learn word and you just keep on punching that L, meaning learning, 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 learning. Mm. As you keep punching it for as long as you can, the L just sort of disappears mm. or, or something like that. And you're left with those letters, right? Mm. E-A-R-N where you can earn. Mm. So learn so that you can be able to earn. True. And going back to the previous question, I always say to people, for you to, for you to, for you to discover that purpose in a lot of people's lives, it starts being the passion in the beginning. Yeah. For you it was the acting. Yeah. For me it was the music or the radio part. Yeah. You do it so much that you love it. You do it with so much percent. Mm. As you're saying, because you love it so much, you want to be good at it. So yeah. you keep sharpening your skills, yeah. bettering your art, bettering yourself, mm. personal development, so much so that at some point years later, this passion will inevitably lead you to your purpose. purpose yeah. Where now this passion, you become so good at it, you put in your 10,000 hours, mm. where now as you grow, you understand mm as you grow in your spiritual growth or in Konzueni, or you grow in Christ, the consciousness does kick in with actually this is, this passion that I just started as just a talent or as something I love when I was young is actually bigger than me. I'm representing Abasekai. I'm representing a whole society. And with the skills that I've learned over the years, I need to use them now to empower other younger me's. Other young pause, yeah. where then that slowly, without even you being aware, mm. the passion is slowly sort of turning into purpose. purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I can summarize mm. my understanding of what you've just said. And yeah. that's how I also, that's how I always answer it to um, younger people. You're an incredible yeah. gent, bro. Ah, thank you so much. You're amazing. Me. I'm glad I met you. You know, you only let me go she'll be shocked to watch this interview and me say i'm actually meeting you for the first time yeah, yeah. it's not actually not the first time is it actually. not the first time no we've met before we made a couple, couple of times um uh sikila wa vetpork at some point yeah vetpork ke tsaba plan kuna le kuna le subo mo mo da okay okay um gaba i think um gaba ya la ka tsana tu subo and then Massive Metro, Massive Metro. Oh, Massive as well. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Massive Metro. Oh, um, yes, yes, I remember that one. And there was a time when I was still at Vits and you guys had the Leadership 2020. Oh, yes, the stuff. seminar. Oh, oh you attended that yeah, as well. Yeah, but I'm glad yeah, that finally yeah. we had this conversation yeah. and I'm I'm so proud of how you've grown. And yeah. still, yeah, but, just, yeah, yeah. but just what's coming out of your mouth is mind-blowing, bro. Like, you just, you are going very far and I'm... Um, 
I felt the energy in the beginning because of the miscommunication went to a different venue. Yeah. And obviously when, when you walked in, my fault, you know, that you're probably like, you've got other things to do and come up with But I'm glad after the conversation that um, I can feel your spirit that we get each other. Yeah, yeah. And from a bigger brother to, uh, you know, a younger brother, I'm proud of you, my brother. And I think we also don't tell in each other enough in this industry that we love, I love you, bro. I love and you I too. love what you Thank represent. You, uh, funny story, you know, um, as we speak about the Leadership 2020, that for me was super inspirational. Um, and in as much as, you know, you're sp speaking about my journey, but there's a seed that you also planted in a young Paul. Literally, there's some Paul back then. You know, with the way you spoke so eloquently, the way you spoke about... For me, like I said, I, I really did problem solving. You came up with a problem that day and you taught us how to solve it or how to go about solving it, you know, in your speech. And for me, these are, it's moments like that where I'm like, okay, God was using you to talk to me. And but God, I, I got the message. Thank you. So I wanted to thank you for that. And I know that you didn't just do that for me. There's a lot of other people that look at your life journey and they are madly inspired. That's who please keep doing what you're doing. And if Leadership 2022, uh, 2020 can come back, I think that that would be great because you guys were doing a lot for a lot of Mpos, Ikanyangs, for a lot of kids out there that are just trying to find their, their place within this world that we live in. Because I feel like a lot of us are misplaced. Mm. We're misplaced and we're displaced where we need that one voice that will almost be an anchor or you know, show us the way by just giving us an inspirational word. We'll figure it out or God will figure it out for us. But if someone plants the seed that it is, it, that it is possible and that it can be done, that's what we need. So mm. thank you. I Thank you, bro. Thank you for that. I appreciate you, bro. Sure. How does the future look like as we wrap it up? The future. I know it's bright, yeah. but how does it look like <laughs> in your eyes? Yo, man. I, I never know how to answer this question because like you said earlier, I'm, 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 I'm here in the prison, but I do hope that all of the decisions that I'm making right now will have a positive impact, but not just for me, for younger cats that are out here trying to do what I'm doing, and I hope that they can even bring it further. So the future is me creating a platform for younger artists to find themselves and to really watch their talent bloom. That's really what it is. Because it's bigger than me. It's never about me. Two last things. I'm going to ask you to look at that camera and speak to a 60-year-old you. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Or even 70-year-old yeah. you. Decades from today, you, I don't know, we'll probably be even, yeah, we'll be having flying cars mm. and we'll be gray <laughs> and, yeah. and you watch this video, but you'll be watching it on the other side. Mm. What would you like to say to that old man there? Yo, you're man. surrounded by your grandkids, you're surrounded <laughs> by your wife there, you're mm. watching this video um, that you recorded back in the day in 2023 towards the end of the year. <laughs> and your grandkids at that time will probably be this age. What would you like to say to that old man over there? Yo, man, I'm, I'm proud of you. you. You did it. You did it. I know it wasn't easy. Um, you went through a lot, but you're still here. I do hope that you picked the right one, though. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> But more than that, enjoy life, man. You've, you've worked hard, and I think it's time for you to relax now. You can relax. Everyone is good. Everyone is good, everyone is well taken care of. And we just need you to be present. I know there's a lot going through your head right now, but I just need you to be here and revel in this particular moment right now. I love you. I love you. Sure. <laughs> in wrapping it up, what would you like to say to all the young people that follow your work out there and all the young people that watch our platform, Um, Stay in school. God is good. Love your mama. Respect your parents. Don't forget to be kind. I think the biggest thing in life is to be kind. A lot of people are going through a lot of things out there and it really helps if we are kinder to each other, if we are there for each other. And while we're all walking each other home, let's hold each other's hands. Let's hold each other accountable. Um, let's not be frivolous. Time is fleeting. All of us are fleeting. I'm older than I was when I walked in here. So whatever you got to do, do it now. Do it now. Time is fleeting. All of this is fleeting. When you think you are at the, the, the highest peak in your career, this too shall pass. But if you also feel like you are at the lowest values, that too shall pass. Right? Nothing 
is forever. The only thing constant in life is change. So allow yourself to, to be immersed in the change. Don't, don't fight change. Be malleable. Be like water. Don't fight change. Don't fight change. I love you too. Mposi I love you too, Thank bro. You. Thank Great you. to meet you Good officially to meet you. and have a proper convo. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you guys are inspired. You guys took a, a page out of his book, out of his story, dropping gems like crazy, wisdom galore. I hope it inspired you and made your day better or your evening better or your morning better. I get messages of some of you guys DM me and saying, I'm watching you now. Some of you guys take screenshots of your computer. Some of you guys put YouTube up on your TV screen in your bedroom. And you're like, I'm watching this episode. It was recorded two years ago. I missed it. What an amazing episode. It just changed my life. You know, so I do hope and I know that this episode will change or impact somebody's life. That's true. There. There's something I forgot to mention. Can Go I right ahead. Please mention this. No, this is your place. Go Guys, right ahead. There's more than 19 million people, young, young adults that have not registered to vote. I think this is very important. We can see the landscape of our country right now. Um, and the best way that we can you know, inside changes by going out there, registering and voting. I can't wait for the EIC to actually finally announce the actual date that we can go vote. But that's already, that already is alarming because we need to be uh, voting next year. Guys, please go out there and make your mark because this is the only way. It's the only way we can literally let our voices be heard. Kalikopa. That's it. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Good to Thank see you. Good to see you too, Dustin. The great impossible. <laughs> I'll see you guys.